right, so for paper mache, uh, you're gonna put some brown paper down first. Uh, this is gonna be like a placemat, and then you are going to use it to kind of catch all the drippings from your glue. Uh, you're also gonna get another piece of paper and kind of rip it into strips, um, but you want them to be pretty short as well into these like little pieces and make yourself a nice pile. So I did a bunch of them before uh, we started here. Um, make sure you have enough because once you start paper mache, you don't want to have to wash your hands a million times um, like that. Then uh, you're going to get your bucket of glue. Yours are these big buckets, but today I have the little one because I am just making this video. Um, so, paper mache. Uh, I guess the easiest way to explain this is when you play rock, paper, scissors with your friends and you throw out the scissors, your two fingers. Uh, those are gonna be really handy when you're first getting started. So you're gonna dip it in the glue and use, oops, uh, sorry about that. You're gonna use your scissor fingers to squeegee it off and you get this nice, a uh, thin piece of paper that you can kind of manipulate um, and put on. So I'm gonna use that to, to wrap my edges here. Uh, you can also do a different technique, which is where you put some glue on your hands and kind of rub it on your sculpture and then place strips on top uh, and kind of mold it in there. Uh, but the idea here is that they have to be saturated uh, enough uh, so that they actually are wet and can start to stick onto our sculpture. Uh, the hardest part about the puppet is you are gonna have to kind of turn it in all directions and make sure you're getting the front and back. You don't have to paper mache everything. I would actually suggest not paper macheing a lot of the body of your animal, um, but kind of focusing more on the parts that you added. Uh, I have a finished example here that's already dry. You can see I left a lot of the body, not paper mache, and everything that I added is. So work on that. Uh, if you're having any issues, let me know. Definitely try to get the inside and outside of things that are showing, and I'll show you what this looks like when it's actually finished, but you don't need to watch me paper mache this whole thing. So I just wanted to update you. I have finished my paper mache. Always before the end of class or when you think you're done, you should take like a little bit extra paper mache glue and put it on your hands and kind of just go around and make sure that everything is as smooth as possible and that everything is still connected. Um, this will make a huge difference because the smoother it is, uh, the better your surface will be for painting. So it's kind of like rubbing lotion in. You just want to make sure everything is connected and that everything has some sort of glue on it so that when it dries, it will harden uh, to what we're looking for. Okay, thank you. All right, so once your paper mache is dry, you are going to use something called gesso, which is a thick white um, acrylic paint uh, that is mixed with kind of like a Mod Podge substance uh, to seal everything. And basically, all you're gonna do is paint your entire puppet with this gesso. Uh, you wanna make sure you paint any of the paper mache, uh, spread it out, get underneath and in all like the little crevices and corners. But you're also going to gesso the canvas or the fabric that is still showing. Um, you can either keep your hand in here because that's kind of helpful, uh, or you can put one of the paper towel tool, uh, tubes that we have kept inside so it kind of stays structured. Uh, this might take you two days because you have to do everything 
back, front, side to side. So take your time, do a good job, and try your best not to get it on your clothes. Once you have your whole thing gessoed, just double check that you didn't miss any spaces, and then go put it on the plastic to dry. If you have additional time um, before the end of class and um, you didn't, in your planning stage, plan out what colors and what you were doing where, now would be a good time to do that. If you don't want to label it like I did, you can use the color pencils to color it in. When you start painting your puppet, you are going to do your base coat first. So decide what colors you want in the background on each part of your puppet and get those down and dry before you start the details like you see here. Then of course the next day you can start painting details um, and adding them all in. I'm doing this in a time-lapse version so you can see this might have taken me uh, a little bit longer and might take you a couple class periods but kind of bringing your animal to life and creating this hybrid that you had originally visioned. I keep it on my hand so I can spin it around and work on all sides until you have your finished puppet. Um, this one is part koala, part leopard, and part penguin. Thank you to those students for the three different suggestions. Um, I'm really happy how it came out. Again, I put it on my hand so I could turn it in different directions and see the different areas. Uh, some areas needed more touching up and more details than others. Uh, and I think I'm happy with the finished product and have created this animal that came to life that we can now use in some sort of puppet show. So enjoy, have fun with this, um, mix and blend colors. If you paint something that you don't love, paint over it. Or wait till the next day when it's dry and get rid of it completely. Um, but yeah, this is all about kind of bringing your vision to life. Thanks.